Um, so I think just to, well, we might as well start. Mm-hmm. Um, you wanted to talk about remote working or working from home because obviously this is now the common, the common situation for mm-hmm. everybody who is still working. I guess there's still a small amount of people aren't are having to go into their workplaces. The majority are still working from home now. Um, I think I found I've heard actually that some people are actually been working from home already a couple of weeks before. So we've we come to the end of the second week of lockdown, um, but they'd already been working mm-hmm. about a week to ten days before. So in effect, they're sort of coming into week week four, week five. Um, mm-hmm. but I guess there's a lot of because we were talking about this last week. Um, and there was various things that we were like talking about how people need to consider and, you know, sort of what, how it's going to be different, but they need to, they need to kind of manage it in a different way as well. I know one mm-hmm. of, one common thing that I've actually heard a lot of people um, talk about, and just to take a step back, <clears throat> so for mm-hmm. myself, this is not new, this is something I've been doing for quite a few years now, working working from home, working remotely, and I think also Mm -hmm. for yourself as well. So, you know, we've kind of learned how to sort of keep that routine. But Mm -hmm. one of the points that I had quite a few people say to me is that they're working longer hours. Mm -hmm. They find that they are working longer hours, and that's actually quite an easy trap to fall into. Um, So maybe if we, yeah, maybe if we start there and maybe some, some advice from your side on how, you think people can sort of avoid that because that's very easily done, um, especially mm-hmm. if you don't have office space and you're working where you're living as well. Correct. Like maybe working from like your your living room or your bedroom. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but, I, I so, but on that point, I would actually say do not work from your bed. It's it's um, very... I, I, it's, I, I, I do agree, but I also challenge you as well to a certain extent. <laughs> I, I think it boils down to your discipline. You know, I think I think remote working, there's a huge element of discipline involved. Now, I think the challenge is not everybody is used to this sudden way of working, this whole, I have to work from home. But I think the first step is, you know, let there be some level of discipline, you know, and at the same time, it doesn't mean you should be a proper workaholic or what I think is happening. There's a lot of delegation going on right now. You know, people who are not particularly used to the concept of working from home are delegating to junior staff or to other members of their team. And those people are typically overworked. Or you have the managers who are having to review so much or attending so many meetings. So what typically happens in the, in the working world is, um, you know, people book out your calendar, you know, like Outlook. You know, Outlook is what a lot of businesses use or like Hangouts or whatever. And what happens is they're booking all this time in your calendar and you're forced to actually attend these meetings. If not, you feel as if you are actually not there and you don't want people to think you're not working because you're at home. And I think that's where the, the talent kicks in. I think my, my first advice to the teams are there should be a level of trust within the business or within yourselves. You should trust that if you tell an employee to deliver this task, you shouldn't necessarily micromanage them delivering it. You should be able to ensure that they're actually going to deliver it at the end of the day. So that's that's the first point I will sort of bring on based on what you have said about people having um, longer working hours and so on. Do you have any yeah, other questions? Because I, 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 what... I can say, actually. Yeah, but I think one of those points as well is, um, I mean, it's quite easy. Yes, obviously, you need to have that trust. But there's this mm-hmm. added complexity because actually when when your team's sitting close by or at least mm-hmm. sitting in the same building or same floor as you, which generally you do find is the case, there's always this point of um, whether you're the, you know, you're the team member or whether you're the team leader, there's always that eye there. So whether you're going, walking out to get a coffee or, you know, you're walking back to your desk and you'll always know at a, at a rough level what people are doing or whether they're sitting mm. around chatting so I think what you're okay. what you're going to find is now especially as managers or as team leaders it's not whether you know the people are going to get the work done or not I think that there's this level of okay I need to make sure the work is getting done now you know so yeah. there, there is that indirect pressure even if it's not been specifically been told so yeah. I, okay so as a as a project manager it's mm-hmm. like, okay, well, how do I now, I've got to keep on top of every little thing and it has to happen virtually. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so, so this is this is this is you can touch on a very good point, and again, I think it boils back to the whole element of trust. However, it's also taking on board a new management style, you yeah. know. So it's no longer how it used to be, because this is where the change has come on board. You know, I think people should be delivery focused as opposed to again micromanaging, like I did mention. You know, you should be able to trust your team that if you set out activities that need to be achieved, they will do it. This is why you recruit people. This is why you get the best people to yeah. join your team. Because you can guarantee they will deliver. However, the way you go about it is slightly different now. Because, yeah, like you said, I mean, I, I go through that challenge sometimes when I'm thinking I really need to be with these guys to see what they're doing. You have to have that hands-on feeling, you know, to see what they're doing on their computers. But the truth is, you can actually use that time a lot more productive. And this is why you should take advantage of certain tools and technology out there. Like, you know, you're probably aware you can actually work on a document simultaneously. You can have a number of members in this actual forum where you're actually trashing out an issue in real time. You can actually even go further by having video conferencing to support you in this dialogue. And yes, you might not be physically there, but you're actually trashing out the problem. But then again, you should have structure. You know, so there should be structured meetings. You shouldn't just have meetings for the sake of having meetings, but everything should be clearly defined. You know, so, you know, probably even little project management techniques whereby you have your weekly calls or your progress calls, they call them. You can actually have this all structured. But, you know, rather than just having this thing in your calendar, put an agenda there. Put what you expect to come out of it and what you expect to come into this session. You know, let it be clearly defined. Let everybody know who's responsible for what. So think about the racing matrix as well. All these things need to be defined now because people are basically freestyling this new way of working, you know, and it's yeah. a huge change, you know. I mean, do, do you see where I'm coming from? Yeah. No, the, I mean, this is it. It's not just, it is not just projects. It's day-to-day -day team management. It's day-to-day -day team mm. actions, etc. cetera. Um, so, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think structure, you're right. The structure is should be there. Um, one of the tips I would have from my side is um, maybe you don't, um, maybe you already had it that you'd have a weekly team meeting. At this time, yeah. I would actually suggest add another meeting in during the week. If, it's just Correct, for a yeah. touch base. I think also what you've yeah. got to remember, it's not about, it's not just about micromanaging those people and it's not just about being on top of them, but you've also got to make sure that people are feeling comfortable and how are they doing? Um, mm. Because, you know, it's, Everyone is very much now in their in their bubble, but you've got yeah. to make sure. I think as a team team leader um, mm -hmm. or any level of a manager, you need to be able to sort of do that. Um, just yeah. touch in, touch in, check in with them. And I think if you do that as a group instead of as a manager having to do it individually, mm -hmm. because I think one of the points you were saying to me last week was how um, you know of people where they've had meetings booked in individually. You know, mm -hmm. And it's like those are individual checkpoints and on a regular mm -hmm. basis. Um, I would reconsider that. Does it need to be mm -hmm. individual? You know, yeah. because be you still people still have to work. Yeah, um, they still have to actually get on with the actual job itself. Yeah. And but just because they are at home, mm -hmm. you know, you exactly. can't expect you can't expect that. Oh, well, actually, now you don't have your community commuting time. Mm -hmm. Start working from eight o'clock and carry on till mm -hmm. six o'clock. Um, exactly. So I think as a manager, you need to think about those things. Those things, it's true. And then again, don't just go by what Outlook says, that this person is fully booked, so they are busy. No, you know, you can have so much meetings, but you really need the time to actually execute. So all of these things need to be taken into account. And yeah. if, if, if as managers, you're not actually looking at those things, then your team will just burn out. Yeah. You know, you'd have people that like, you know, would be stressed, would not be happy, would be... um upset just just want to take time off work you know i had a friend i was talking to the other day and um, she said um she actually had to take a day's holiday because she was burnt out and yeah. she's never worked so hard and this is i think she's in the legal background as well you know she's a barrister this lady and i thought to myself well it shouldn't really be the case it means you know you're being overpowered with so much work because they think you're not busy if they see space on your calendar but that yeah. time is when you actually get to do the work so managers need to really think about these things because it's essential you know and then also going back to the topic around management style it's no longer we're no longer robots now you know i think tapping into that empathy side of things comes into play here you know, people, especially because of the scenario or situation we're in right now, you know, people want to feel loved. People want to feel appreciated. They want to feel cherished. So, 
you know, I think it's also good practice to check up on the people. How are you doing? How's your family? Don't just be so robotic about things. Don't just, you know, wake up in the morning and then boom, boom, boom. You know, you should check up on your team, genuinely care for them, create that atmosphere of them being able to actually message you freely or interact a lot more closely with yourself. Because if you don't do this, they would be, I mean, they're, the truth is everyone's a little bit frustrated about this being a home thing, you know, but then again, the last thing you want to do is make work part of that, yeah. you know, so work should also be that breather, that, ex, that, that, that avenue where you can come out of this bubble of being at home, but you're actually doing, and you feel in love for what you're actually bringing to the table. So it really goes back down to the management style. It has to be changed, you know, you know, and I think business is looking at things from what we specialize in in the transformation space. It all needs to be clearly defined, you know. What sorts of meetings are we having? You know, okay, yes, you're executing this project, you have multiple project managers, if it's a program, for instance. But how is it structured? Who are we engaging? How are we working with the engineers or how are we working with the guys in the office space? How are they interacting? You know, should we perhaps have a live live video feed where anybody can plug into it at any time to discuss, you know, you have sticky boards where you're speaking notes, rather, which is all virtual, where you can actually put comments and... You could be interactive. It doesn't have to be phone calls, you know, and even on that point of phone call, like you mentioned the other day, does it even have to be a video call? Could it just be a phone call? You know, because there's this habit of because we're actually remote working, let it be a video conference. It could be an audio call. It could be a text message just to get things done. So the only difference between now and then is we're now virtual. You know, we don't necessarily need to engage each other in real time. And unfortunately, this has actually made things go pretty quick. Yeah. You know, in terms of um, how we've advanced in this space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe if we just very, very briefly sort of give some tips to the employees, so the team members, um, because, okay, managers, they've got a different level of training. They've got different level of experience. Yes, this is going to be, Mm -hmm. this is going to be different for a lot of managers as well. But I think also, um, a lot of the team members. Um, so just a couple of points, I think. making a weird noise in the background. I'll just let him into the office. <laughs> so this is all have to remove. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I think it should now be accepted that on a, on conference calls there'll always be some sort of background noise somewhere. There will be exactly. It could be kids. It could be family. It could be dogs. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I'll so just, I I'll, think, I'll, um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Sorry, I'm listening. Yeah, so I mean, I'm just going to run through a couple of points from my side from what team members should be doing. So you as an individual, what you should be doing to handle this. And then if you Mm -hmm. just add in a few points from that point of view. Um, So I think we've already touched on it anyway briefly, but I think when it comes to the timings, um, Mm -hmm. don't feel like you have to be online the moment you wake up. If you actually... You don't need to. Depending depending on how how you wake up, like my suggestion would Mm -hmm. be, Actually, no, you don't necessarily need to wake up the time you normally do. Um, mm-hmm. Make You've got an extra couple of hours and, okay, that's good. Take advantage of it. But I would mm-hmm. wake up about an hour before you're actually meant to be starting work. So if you've got, if you're generally starting work at nine o'clock, I would wake mm-hmm. up for an hour, at least an hour before. Go and do your breakfast, go and do whatever before you start your actual working day. And those, mm-hmm. and then also don't forget when you're in an office, you will take a walk to go and get your lunch. You'll take a walk to go and get a cup of coffee. So mm-hmm. lunch actually is a big one. Don't get into the habit of having lunch. I know we, we mostly do it in the office. A lot of people do it in the office where they'll go and buy lunch and bring it back to mm-hmm. the desk. But don't yeah. forget that to go and buy your lunch and bring it back, you know, you're using up 15, 20 minutes there as well. And if now all you're doing is going to your kitchen, getting lunch and coming back to your desk, you're missing mm-hmm. that as well. So it's make true. a point. Yeah, make a point, I think, at lunchtime to mm-hmm. do that. And then normal working when you normally finish or normally getting ready to leave the office, do the same mm-hmm. thing. Make sure you switch everything off and you put it away. Because if it's on and it's running, you'll still be tempted to go and have a look. Like, oh, true. what's happening on the email? What happened with the email? Have I got any messages? Yeah. Don't do that. Just like you would close everything down and you would leave the office, whatever time that is, do the same thing at home. And make sure yeah. it's away somewhere. Um, sure. So from a from a structure day structure point of view and timing point of view, that's what I would suggest. Um, the yeah, same point I, from I, me. I, I, yeah, mm-hmm. 
And then the second point yeah. for me is, I I still personally believe actually working from a certain space, and I know it's not straightforward. You're not going to be able to get a separate room where you can go and work from, but mm-hmm. try to find a space where you can set your laptop up, laptop, and you can get a chair and make sure it sort of if it has to be on the dining table, mm-hmm. make sure everything's at the right height. Your chairs are comfortable, yeah, yeah. your PC, and the, you know, those little things as well make a really big difference. True. Um, so, from my side, those are like two of the tips. I don't know any other tips that you have in order to get people just to get used to this and to be able to sort of not get frustrated with their day to day working. Yeah, I mean, what I'd say is um, ask your companies actually for if you need furniture for work, <laughs> like if you need a desk or a chair. You know, there's nothing wrong in asking your employees to see if they can help you. I'm sure a few employees will be more than happy to help with this. You know, if you need a monitor as well, ask your company, see if they can help you with this, you know. Um, and I, I think just just like you rightly said, you know, we shouldn't forget we're normal people who just have been forced into this situation. You know, in the past, you stand up from your desk or you walk to your office. You know, now you just happen to be at home. Still take time out, you know, get up, get your coffee, look around, you know, but don't feel the need to be too serious. If I know you know, but that's the wrong word, but, uh, you know, don't feel as if you need to come across a certain way because you're on video conference, be yourself. And then managers out there, I would say, you know, work on the empathy side of things within your team as well. Get everybody to understand, you know, life continues. This is just what we're doing. You know, I would even say drop the, if, if you're not if you're not really in an industry where you have to be super formal, don't start being formal because you're having video conferencing. Yeah. If your style in the office is wearing trousers or jeans and a shirt, do the same thing, you know. You could even dress even a little step lower, you know. Focus more on delivery, if anything, you know. Um, but do you, think, I, do you think video calls, do you think you always need to have your video on or actually be selective about when you have videos on? Um, I, I, I'm typically selective. It's not all the time I go about video. You know, sometimes, I, I mean, you know, why do I even do video call? I guess it's just to have a better engagement with the person, you know, but it's not necessarily like must happen. You know, it depends on who. I mean, I've had like today, I've had a few calls I'll probably say around 40% of them were audio as opposed to video, you know, um, a lot of emails, you know, there's no need for us to actually have <laughs> VCs yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. But actually on the point of emails though, that's now a lot of people have sort of got their um, teams or they've got um, Zoom. I, I don't, I don't really know. Oh, sorry. One second. Someone's just saying audio is not working. Oh, that's really strange. But you can hear me, correct? Well, we can hear each other. Yeah, we can hear each other. Yeah, that would have, I would have actually been surprised. <laughs> yeah, don't think audio is working. Can anyone hear us? Well, that's a good point. Oh, thanks, Jana. Oh, no, okay. Okay, Yana said it's all good. Okay. She says she it's all good. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I was just saying, in regards to the emails... Um, Mm -hmm. And especially now, I mean, I don't I don't know how widely used it is, but I think um, more so it will happen now where people are using either Microsoft Teams or various IM chats software um, or these Mm -hmm. virtual sort of calling. Um, I would actually say and this is one thing I learned over the years. So I've I've done remote working. I've worked with global teams remotely for the best part of 10 years. And the Mm -hmm. one thing that. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but I would say the thing is learning when an email is needed versus where a quick message is needed. Um, Yeah. So Mm -hmm. actually, yeah. So I really think carefully because there's going to be a lot of emails. And this is just a general thing. It's not even from this. It's not even just from what the situation we're in. But I think even on a general basis, really consider, Mm -hmm. does it need to be an email or can it be a quick message? Like you said earlier, does it actually need to be a phone call? Or can you just do a quick message and it's there for people to sort of um, pick it up? But I think on the flip side, you've got to make sure you're not those the status of whether you're available or not um, Mm -hmm. within these IM features. So, like, for example, in Teams, 
You can say you're available, you're busy, et cetera. Also use those, but use them sensibly. I think don't always keep yourself as do not disturb, but also mm -hmm. kind of use those. Um, so, yeah, so I think in, in regards to communications, you've got to rethink how you're doing those communications. And that is not relevant to just now. I think moving forward, yeah. this is going to change the way people are working. And it's a good chance to learn how to change. I mean, I'm still, I still end up having chains of email and it's one mm. sentence. Create a group. Yeah. Let's have it. Let's chat on on teams why do we need to have this mm -hmm. chain of emails for it so it's true yeah. i know it's, it's actually it's, it's crazy <laughs> you know so, yeah I, I any other people, you know, technology as well if anything take advantage of tech technology i like zoom but i think businesses don't seem not business but a lot of people don't seem to realize zoom is actually a social thing it's not really a proper proper video conferencing style type suite, if you know what I mean. So like, if you compare it to the likes of Microsoft Teams or Google Hangouts, you have a lot more functionality with it. You know, you can attach so many things. You can have follow-on sessions with, with, with the, the tools. You know, you can integrate everything. You can create groups. You can do so much more. You know, so I'd say explore, you know, other tools out there. Don't just go by Zoom because everybody's talking about Zoom. Zoom is a social thing. You know, that, that's one of the advice I would give people. Um, and yeah, you know, communicate, but clearly just go straight to the point, you know, and I, I, I really, like I said earlier, empathy. I think that's pretty important now because people are going through a lot right now. You yeah. know, a lot of people want to be out there doing what they want to do, but they're not. So as managers, you know, you really need to tap into that empathy side of your business. And yeah, I think I think I think that's about it, really. You know, yeah. uh, make sure you have I mean, that work-life balance. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah it's, it's know. even it's even more important, I think. Now, um, I know mm. I know we're restricted to our houses and we're restricted to just that one outing a day, but I think having that work-life balance is even more important um, in this time and this situation mm. we're in than it was before. Mm. Um, and hopefully, as a result of this, we can all come out with some better habits on how we're managing work and also hopefully managers can learn how to allow that work-life balance to their team as well true this is true and also businesses invest in training as well send your teams on training you'll be shocked they might not even know how to use the basics you know so don't just assume yeah. everybody knows how to use um zoom or teams or whatever just get them a certain level of training in like a one-on-one that would make a big difference as well so invest yeah. in that as well yeah, yeah, perfect. So I guess I'm done now. Because <laughs> I can keep going. There's a lot one can say. You know, but in yeah. a nutshell, guys, just think about structure. Think about your processes. Let there be more con let it let it all be sort of structured. Um, think about, you know, defining everything, your inputs, your outputs to a meeting. You know, what are you having these meetings for? What do you expect to come out of these meetings? You know, then think about your team as a whole. How do you ensure the right people are filtered into the meetings, you know? And then don't just block out people's calendars. Give them time to actually get the work done. It's a nine to five, not a nine to like, you know, nine to twelve. You know, so you must have that work-life balance. You know, being busy doesn't mean your outlook could be fully booked. You could have literally a few meetings a day and then use the rest to actually get things done. And managers, don't stress your team because of what you see on Outlook. You know, you should have that empathy thing going. You know, but that's it in a nutshell from my side. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. That's great. All right, Nice Tanina. to chat with you. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Kenzo, say hi. <laughs> Look, he came to sleep, you know. <laughs> All right. Take care, man.